Hey writing class, welcome back to another lesson. You guys did such an amazing job on your tests, so I've returned them all to you. Please have a look. I've written your marks and some comments, so please, when you have a chance, have a look through those. For today's class, we're going to be looking at lesson 33, parts A through D. So let's begin. So for part A, it's going to be looking at starting a new paragraph when a new person talks. So you're going to write the letter P in front of each sentence that should start a new paragraph. Remember, you can have one person talk in a paragraph. When another person speaks, you must start a new paragraph. So the instructions ask us to read the passage and to put the letter P in front of each sentence that should start a new paragraph. So let's read the first paragraph together. It says, Tim prepared to make his first parachute jump. As Tim looked out the door of the plane, he said, It sure is a long way down to the ground. Then Tim looked at his instructor and said, I don't think I can jump. So in those sentences, right, the only person speaking so far is Tim. So we don't need to start a new paragraph. I'll read the next sentence. You can do it, the instructor said. So now we have a new person speaking, which is the instructor. So in front of the word you, you need to write the letter P. So we'd need to start a new paragraph, right where it says you can do it, the instructor said. And then the next sentence says, as Tim looked down, he replied, but I sure am scared. So now, once again, we need to put a P in front of the word as, because in that sentence, now the instructor isn't speaking anymore, Tim is speaking again. So we need to make sure that we start a new paragraph. So what I want you guys to do now is read the rest of the sentences, and then any time a new person is speaking, you need to start a new paragraph by putting the letter P in front where it would start. Just as a hint, you should have two more P's written in the rest of the sentences. So you can pause the video now, and then I will see you guys in part B. So welcome back to part B. I'll read the instructions. It tells us that in each item, a person says two things. So I'll read item number one. I'll be glad to help you, she said. I'm not doing anything right now. So the woman says two things. I'll be glad to help you, and I'm not doing anything right now. You can see how the sentences are punctuated. There are quotes around each thing that she said. For the first thing she said, a comma is inside the quotation marks. For the second thing she said, a period is inside the quotation marks. So item number two is not punctuated. So the sentence is, the lion says two things. So listen, thank you very much, the lion said to the mouse. I'll never forget what you have done. So the first thing that the lion said was thank you very much. And the second thing that the lion said was, I'll never forget what you have done. So we need to punctuate these two sentences. So I have them written right over here. So let's work on it together. So we need to find the exact words that the lion said, right? So those exact words will be, thank you very much. So around those words, I'm going to put my quotation marks. Remember, I need to put my quotation marks at the beginning and at the end of the exact words that were spoken, right? Before my closing quotation marks, I need to add a comma. So I'm going to put my comma right over there. Now, we need to see the second sentence. So the second sentence is, I'll never forget you what you have done. So now those are also exact words that were spoken. So I'm going to put my quotation marks around those words. Right? So right before the word I'll, and then right at the end. And I am done. Right, I don't need to add my comma. And then we already have our period written in. So once again, I had to put my quotation marks around the exact words that were spoken. So in the first sentence, 
the exact words were thank you very much. I needed to include my comma as well. And then in the second sentence, the exact words spoken were, I'll never forget what you have done. And it already has our period, so I don't need to add anything else. So now I want you guys, looking at the first example that was done and the example we completed together, work on numbers three, four, and five, and add in your quotation marks and commas where you need to have them. So you can pause the video now, and then we can look. I'll meet you in part C. So welcome back for part C. I'll read the instructions. It asks us to fix up the four unclear words. So it tells us that the word he is clear if we know, if we know the person the word refers to. The word it is clear if we know the thing or the object the word refers to. This passage has four unclear words. What we have to do is first find those words, cross them out, and write the name of the person or the thing so that it is clear. So I'll read and you guys can look at the pictures. So the first sentence says, Raymond and Kevin worked at a rodeo. The next sentence says, Kevin was a cowboy who rode bulls. The next sentence says, he was a rodeo clown who helped cowboys. There is an unclear word in that sentence, right? Who was the rodeo clown? It was Raymond, right? So what we have to do is cross out the word he and write Raymond. So now I want you to read the rest of the passage, look at the pictures to help you. If the word he or it is unclear, you need to cross out the word and write the name of the person or thing so that it is clear. Once again, there are four unclear words together. So we found the first one together. We crossed out the word he and changed it to Raymond. So there will be three more unclear words. So you guys can pause the video now, find those unclear words, use the pictures to help you, and then write the clear word on top. So you guys, I will see you in part D. So welcome back to part D. So for part D, it tells us that parts of a sentence that begin with if, unless, or although can be moved to the beginning of a sentence. So sentence number one says, we will be very happy if we win the game. So the part that begins with if is, if we win the game. So now what we're going to do is move that part to the beginning of the sentence. So once again, we're looking at the words or parts of a sentence that begin with if, unless, and although. And it tells us that those parts can be moved to the beginning of a sentence. So in number one, we have the sentence, we will be very happy if we win the game. So what we have to do is starting where, with the word if, underline that, and then we're gonna move it to the beginning of a sentence. So now, instead of the sentence saying, we will be very happy if we win the game, the sentence will say, if we win the game, we will be very happy but we also need to include a comma. So right after the part that tells if, so if we win the game, comma, we will be very happy. So now I want you guys to look at sentence number two and three, and then use wherever the word unless or although, that ending piece of the sentence, you're going to move to the beginning of the sentence. Don't forget to add in your comma, Great job, guys, and then I will see you in tomorrow's lesson.